Good evening. Welcome to Child Psychology. This is PSY 216. I just wanted to take some time here to walk you through class and give you a sense of where everything is. So when you first log into our class, this is what you'll see. This is under the course materials tab here on the left. You can see that we have three modules, modules one, two, and three. And then over here on the left is your syllabus and resources tab as well. So you can click on that and you can see our syllabus. This will take you into Connect where you can get started and register your access code. Or it will also give you the option to purchase access to the material as well as the ebook. And it will give you, I believe, an option for a two week trial for you to get started if you don't have your access code yet. But you do have assignments, so you will need access at some point but you'll have to put that access code in, purchase and put it in. There is information on APA, there's a template, there is examples of what references look like in APA, uh, so that's some other information. And then this course schedule is also in your syllabus, um, <clears throat> but this is, uh, you know, just kind of a quick shot of what it is that you're doing week by week. So you can see the dates are on here. All of your due dates are listed, what assignments you have. So basically, if you have a discussion, there's two dates that you have to remember each week. You have assignments due every week uh, on Sunday. Okay, so like the chapter one smart book and the child theorist worksheet would be due Sunday the 29th. And then your discussions, anytime you have a discussion, I want you to post the first uh, discussion post by Wednesday. Okay, so all of your dates here. Uh, are for Wednesday evenings and then do two replies to your classmates by Sunday. Okay, so that's how each week is set up. Um, it, there is a few weeks here you don't have any discussion, so if it doesn't tell you anything about a discussion, there is none that week. Uh, but and then anytime you have an exam too, it's also just uh, Sunday for the due date, right? So you have the whole week to do the exams. You can also see on the left here, you can just click on the chapter if you want and it'll take you right into the work for that material uh, rather than starting on the course materials page and going into module one so you can access it either way right so if we click on uh chapter one here in a minute you'll see there are all there's two folders for each thing for each chapter so there's one that says readings videos and resources and then another one that says work to complete so when we click on this uh, this is a PowerPoint, so typically the PowerPoints are on here first, and then there's other articles uh, or websites or videos you can watch that all relate to the information. Sometimes you'll find uh, information here that's linked to the assignment, so that child theorist worksheet that you'll do is, this is the video that you're going to watch for that, so you're going to want to make sure that you always go through this folder first and then take a look at whatever work you have to complete. And so we clicked on the work to complete for chapter one. You have your introduction post, right? Uh, keep in mind that there's a rubric for every discussion. The rubric is the same, uh, but this one only, you don't have to have any references, but every other discussion moving forward, you should have at least two references formatted in APA. This is the worksheet that you need for that video that I showed you. And then this is the smart book assignment that you'll do. So you can access uh, McGraw-Hill through the syllabus and resources, or you can just click on the assignment here, and it'll take you into the registration page. I know it looks a little different on my end. You can see here, there's a student that uh, started the assignment. There's another student that logged into McGraw-Hill but hasn't started anything yet. So once you register, it'll ask you for your email address and that kind of information access code. Once you actually get in, it'll look like this. Uh, and so it's going to ask you if you want to start reading the book or if you want to go right to the questions, right? Obviously, you should read the book first, right? Uh, when you open the book, it should look like this. If you're having any problems getting this page to load, reach out to the McGraw-Hill Help Desk. Um, they are local here to the Chicagoland area, and so they're really good at helping you fix, you know, settings on your computer or clearing cookies, things like that, to make sure that the, the information here, the book is loading as well as the assignments. So this is just as if you had a hard copy of your textbook in front of you. You can see there's a table of contents so you can bounce around. Uh, and then you have, you have the ability to jump into the questions too. So when we click on questions, 
we'll click add it. And so it's going to give you the question, right? It also gives you the opportunity to read that about that concept, right? So you can read the question. If you're not sure what it is, you can click on read about the concept. It's going to take you exactly to that point of the book where that uh, question is. And then we can bounce back and we can go back into the question. So let's just say this one, right? And um, you can see at the bottom, it wants you to rate your confidence level. So you can say, you know, if you're super confident and you know it, say hi. If you're, eh, maybe this is right, maybe not, say medium. And if you're absolutely not sure, say low. And what this system does is it kind of tracks where you're at because every student learns and understands material different. And so if you're honest with your confidence level down here, then you, uh, it tells the system, well, this person, you know, was high, highly confident, but they got it wrong. So maybe they need a little bit more practice and then it'll kind of, you know, gauge your questions and um, take you to parts of the book that, you know, focus on your problem areas. Okay. You will get the full points uh, for this assignment as long as these bars up here at the top are full. So let's click on high. And it says that we got it wrong. It told us what the correct answer is, right? And now we're gonna go to the next question, but you're gonna see there's no nothing filled in here at the top with the bars on the top left-hand side where it says zero of 17 concepts. And so that's because we got it wrong, right? So let's click next question. Uh, and then culture, gender, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status are blank components of development. We pick whichever one we think that this one relates to. If we are, you know, we choose our answer. If we are super confident, we hit high. If you're not, you can go in and read about it or you can click medium or low. And it says we got it right, right? It tells you you got it right. Some of these are multiple choice. Some are drag and drop. Some are put them in order. Some are fill in the blank. Some are true, false. Like there's a variety of question styles in here, but you can always go in and read about the concept first. And now you can see at the top left, we have our little blue mark up here. And so that shows us that we made progress. So as long as your bar gets filled, it doesn't matter if you answer 20 questions or 100 questions. Uh, we just want this to be filled and then it knows, the system knows that you've mastered the concepts and you've gotten all the concept questions right and it will have you, you know, you're, you're done with the assignment, you're complete with the assignment. Okay, So that's what it looks like. It also recognizes some uh, <clears throat> spelling errors too so if you're close you know it'll still give you the credit but it'll also give you the correct spelling uh, but it won't mark it wrong so you're not even if you answer 20 questions and you get 20 questions wrong it's not taking off points but it's going to keep asking you those concepts until you master it which is you know why it's always good to go and read read the assignment first right so let's go back out we're going to exit the assignment and we're going to go back to blackboard Okay, so that's how we, you know, access SmartBook and, you know, put your access code in, register for that. Um, what else do we need to know? You can click on discussion board and you can see all the discussions. We can see there's a couple students that already posted information in here. But my suggestion to you is not to necessarily jump to the discussion board tab, but to really stay in these module folders, because then you're going to ensure that you do the work every time, you know, and that you're not missing anything. So this is all of our assignments for chapter two. You can see we've got the smart book. It tells you the due dates, our discussion, and then this is the Bronfenbrenner assignment. And if you remember back from the readings, videos, and resources for chapter one, there is also information here about Bronfenbrenner. So, and you'll find the information in your book too. Okay. But this is the idea of how you want to do it. Um, you can see I clicked module one here and it just kind of gave me an overview. There's three chapters, your exam is in here. Um, so that's what we, you know, want to make sure that we're, we're focusing on. Uh, you click on my grades and you'll be able to see your grades uh, all listed here. You can see the rubric, you can click on view rubric for your discussion. Like I said, all the discussion rubrics are the same. So you just want to make sure that your post is complete. Make sure you check your word count. Um, this is for your responses to students. So each of your replies should be approximately that long in length, but also the content matters, right? 
uh, organization and structure. This also talks about APA, so make sure that you have your two APA references in here. You can see it post uses at least two. You know, this is if you have two, but maybe you've got some errors, not quite APA style, you're automatically going to get this 4.2 section if you only include one. If you don't have any, uh, references at all, you're going to be down here at the zero points. Um, typically, I, I might go in and add a couple points um, to this, you know, uh, depending on, you know, there's the, there's no grammatical and spelling errors and things like that. I might add a couple points back in that section. And then the timeliness. So your first post was posted by Wednesday at 11.59 or sooner, and then your two replies by Sunday, right, of that same week. So that's your discussion rubrics. Um, let's look at your syllabus real quick. Um, you can see my cell phone number is here. All I ask is that you please don't call me in the middle of the night. I often, even though I say this every semester, I still get students that like to text me at two o'clock in the morning, especially in November and December and be like, hey, what's my grade? Don't do that. Please don't do that. That's a good way for me not to answer your text, okay? No. But I encourage you to text me, you know, reach out, ask me if you're having problems or, you know, what the situation is that you're experiencing and, you know, I'll do my best to help you. Uh, I check my email a gazillion times a day. Uh, to be honest, I probably check it too much. Um, it's like, oh wait, it's been five minutes. Let me check. Oh wait, it's been 30 minutes. I need to check my email again. So I do check it quite often. Uh, so, uh, this is, you know, just make sure you're doing your own work. Don't plagiarize anything, you know, late work. Like I've, I've been a stickler on late work. I'm not going to lie. However, I do understand that there's, you know, we're living in a different world right now with the pandemic and there's still some concern and some health issues out there. So, you know, I, I will listen to a case by case basis, but do your best to really try and keep up with the work on Sundays because I will grade it, you know, that following week. Um, usually the first part of the week I, I try and grade things. I try and get everything in by Friday or Saturday um, of that week so that you have a sense of, you know, changes or, you know, how to improve your grades, things like that. Uh, so I do try and keep up with the grades throughout the semester, but that means I also need you guys to submit your work on time too, right? Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so that's just kind of general stuff you should listen. Oh, here, submitting assignments. First off, please don't email assignments. Uh, that would be way too many emails all the time, so make sure you submit everything in Blackboard. And this is more to my dot pages, my Mac users, but don't submit dot pages because I can't ever open them. Okay, so make sure you save it as a dot doc or dot doc x or rtf or even a PDF if you need to, okay, but please watch that. Um, and don't submit Google Docs either, because often those are locked and I can't get into those. So, you know, stick with something that's uh, PC compatible for submissions. Um, and then like for your discussions, and I think some of your journals and some of your writing assignments too, you can write right into Blackboard, but there are some things that you'll want to do in like a, a Word document format. Uh, this is kind of a breakdown of your assignments, uh, your smart book assignments. You have some quest assignments. I'll go back and show you that in a minute and then your discussions as well as your exams, okay? So how many points we have total in the class, and then there's your course schedule again. So that's just kind of a quick synopsis of your syllabus. And then let me go back in here and let's see when there's a quest assignment too. So your first quest is Gabby here. So this is for chapter five. So let's go up here to the work to complete for chapters five and six. So let's click on quest for Gabby. Um, oh, you can see this uh, assignment too is a little bit lengthier, which is why, you know, you have uh, like a month to do it, almost a month to do this. Um, so it's always good to look at some of the assignments ahead of time to get a sense of how long it's going to take you to do something. So let's click on quest. And and, and that's for students, but, um, I'm trying to see how I can view this from a student's perspective, but I don't see how to do that here. Hmm. Let me click on the home tab and go down to Quest and see if I can. No, that didn't help me either. I like to preview this uh, like a student would preview it.
Hmm. I keep doing the same thing. Don't I? Well, this kind of gives you a sense of what it looks like, at least. Um, so Gabby is our nine-month-old baby. And so these are the, the things that are checked here are the different um, kind of role play that you're going to see in here, right? So these are the different uh, terminology or parts of different theories that you're going to address with Gabby. So let me click on view assignment. Click on continue. Oh, wait, there was a preview button, wasn't there? Yeah, there we go. That's what we're going to do, preview. So when you get quests to load, and then remember, if you're having trouble getting this to load, reach out to McGraw-Hill, and they can help you to be able to utilize uh, the system better. And we can see it's not loading for me either. Here we go. So it gives you a little description to read right, about Gabby. Um, it tells us assigned items completed is zero out of nine. We're going to click begin quest. And so it made us full screen here for us, right? Gabrielle is a nine month old girl who lives in the Southwest with her extended family. She's got her mom, her grandma, her aunt, her grandfather. She is securely attached, which relates to Mary Ainsworth and John Holby. She's happy, she's healthy, and she's got her typical milestones met for the age. She can't speak yet because she's only nine months, and so she does have some sign language uh, so that she can at least have some kind of communication with her parents or her family. So it tells you what the objectives are of the game. So this system kind of gives you that gaming technique, that gaming, you know, kind of play or feel for those of you that like to play video games. So they get to look around a little bit and kind of see the layout of the house and, you know, where people are. I clicked on my, my mouse, my tab, so we can view the objectives, we can view the descriptions, we can click begin. So we played as Gabriella, view all the achievements. So I clicked my mouse and we can see Gabby's crawling. So I don't know if you guys can hear, but the, um, if this is picking up what the computer is saying, but the person talked and said, hi, Gabby, what is it that you want to do, which you can see at the bottom on the screen. And then walk, play with the puppet, or leave. So let's click play with the puppet. You can click the green arrow. She's walking. She's young to be walking at nine months. Eight months is typically the youngest, but I. On average, though, we say infants walk within a month of their first birthday, give or take. So we can click on. We got the gross motor skills for the monkey because we got to we walk towards it. We got another achievement. Close that off. So we're just, you know, kind of Xing and clicking on different, different things to see, you know, what's going on. So that's just to kind of give you a sense of what this uh, game is about. Okay. I'm gonna close that out. Continue. Make sure you have three attempts at it too to make sure you get it right. It's like that with all of your quests. All right, so that is quest. So your smart book assignments and your quests are the different ones that you will have throughout the semester um, that are from the smart book. That's your syllabus again. All right, so that's just kind of a sense. You can see faculty information. Here again is my information. This is typically when I'm available to meet with students or talk on the phone or Zoom if uh, 
it is so desired. Otherwise, I'm also available really during the week. So feel free to reach out. You know, I can always jump on Zoom and help you guys out. Or we can talk on the phone. Or if you want to text me, you can do that anytime. You can send me an email anytime, right? With the exception of that middle of the night time with my phone, okay? <laughs> but you can email anytime. That, that doesn't bother me. But just you know, watch that texting and calling so late at night. All right, so that is just a general introduction. This is where everything is, kind of how I suggest you maneuver the class. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, and I will uh, be in touch via Blackboard with all of you. So I hope you have a great semester, not just in this class, but all of your classes. And uh, let me know how I can help along the way. You guys have a great night. Bye-bye.